Okay, hello everyone. Hi, Dr. Cho. Okay, so I would like to first uh, get the um, questions from you. So, um, do you have any questions on the practice exam problems? Uh, Maria, can you um, clarify uh, your question? Um, Hello, you know, uh, I just wanted to check if uh, you wanted to see every, like this, a format. Mm. Um, Maria, I cannot hear you. Um, could you? Um, make uh, volume louder you wanted to check all the code i mean the code is important or just the result the output maybe for the scatter plot does it matter a format or just that it is actually a scatter plot Okay, so this, yeah, sorry, could you say your question again? I mean, your voice was low at the first and I only heard only the last one about, about the scatter plot. So could you say again? So, uh, I mean, so the the question, the in the exam question, then you can. Ah, uh, uh, cool. Okay, so, um, the. You can put the um. Uh, so I mean, I'll ask you put. Uh, your code as an um, appendix. So, in the 
main in the question you only put output for results but um i ask you to put code in the appendix and code coding may not be very complex um, For example, I will not, so coding may be just uh, making a plot or running um, linear, simple linear regression or the regression or general regression. Um, but um, and or to just calculate as the practice exam uh, 1A is calculate 95 as a computing interval. Um, but but that kind of version in the short code, but main it's not gonna be very long code. I mean, it will not be very long. Code. Um, and then for the for general are uh, the um, um, the for the exam questions the so I will ask the um, the um, the 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 interpretation of the um, uh, the the output visual as you have seen the um, this the um, uh, this is the practice exam and, and or, or I can ask you to analyze the data set as we did in the homework. And also there may be some the theoretical questions as the um, um, this practice exam. So it's kind of the um, combination of all types of the um, questions uh, Dr. Chung, I uh, have a question. Okay. So on the practice exam, only the first and the last one are with R, correct? The other two are just um, by hand. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. First, yeah, first the one and four requires the only requires the R, R, R calculator uh, using R. I mean, for you can use R as your calculator. So for for I mean for number two, I mean okay, I think number two you need to use R for for your last the last question. Um, um, but the you can also use R as a calculator if you want. You can use a calculator, just the usual conventional calculator, or you can use R as your calculator. Doesn't matter, yeah. I mean it's not I would say okay for um, I mean overall you can, you can think that 
say you you need to use R. I mean, whether it is the just the code or just using the calculator. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, any other questions? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> Yes, uh, I can go over the practice problems. So, um, I think for number one and number four, uh, is the um, so you can use just the um, what you, the R uh, to calculate that, and then. Interpretation is the um, and the, I think the interpretation is the um, quite the um, it's not very difficult to, uh, to solve it. Um, for one uh, C, um, so the researchers are interested in the, the providing a, a range for the proportion of Poland a queen who spends ten seconds and the source might remove. 
So it asks me, would it be more appropriate to report a 95% confidence interval on the mean response for or a 95% prediction interval? So um, this question asks to, well, whether we need to choose the uh, confidence interval for mean response or the prediction interval for prediction interval. And then the, um, um, so um, what do you think about the C? I would think um, it would be more appropriate to do a prediction interval because we want to predict how many pole in the queen that spends 10 seconds at the source might remove. It's not really a confidence interval, but a prediction one. So does everyone agree with the uh the prediction number uh for the one C? Uh, Yeah, because the, we use the prediction tool because we are interested in the prediction of the future value. I mean, we have the same future observation and we are interested in the uh, interval for uh, the, the future value. So so that's that's why we use the, the prediction interval. And for A and B, I mean, for A, you can calculate 95% confidence interval by using the information of the estimate and then the, the standard error. Uh, and then for B, um, um, I mean, it's the, uh, it asks about interpretation. So as you know, for the regression coefficients, it is the, 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 uh, the average value of the response is changed, uh, is expected to change it by um, um, coefficient of the beta value. Um, so you can use that for that um, interpretation on there, and then uh, and you can also make a, a conclusion on about the the significance on this here the duration. So it's a less than the point of five. Um, here the in this scientific context, um, 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 this duration and then this removed are I mean the and the proportion of, of a pollen removed and the duration has the there is a significant the um, linear uh, I mean there's just there's a strong evidence of linear association. So when uh if I ask uh, the interpretation slope estimate in the context of the study, I mean if you just say okay, so we reject the null hypothesis, you just write down that, then you cannot get on get uh, um, full point uh, because I ask about the um, the interpretation in this in this uh, context of the science. So if you just state as statistically, then um, you cannot get a full point. So you would expect us to do, say like, well, the beta naught value is 0.13, the beta one is 0.02, uh, which means that for every unit of input, 
increment it it the model increases by 0 0.02 and then it's like uh prob well the p-value is less than 0 0.05 so therefore we can reject the null hypothesis that the correlation is zero something like that i mean that's not good answer is that what i'm okay. saying so what else would you include there as i said so you need to make an interpretation in the scientific context So I will ask you to uh, interpretation like this. So And then like this. So you need to explain by using the words um, um, in, in in this uh, in this in this study. Is it clear? So again, I would like to uh, have a answer with uh, in the context of study using statistics. Okay, so for two, um, so we have the uh, sample size with 12, and we have this uh, summary statistic uh, here. So we have a uh, information about SST, and then we have the information about the uh, variance, 
and then we have information about the uh, sum of SI minus X bar square. And then we have information about the Y bar and we have information of the X bar. So this number, question number two is very similar to the example that we have discussed in the class. Um, I mean, in the class I gave the beta, value of beta one hat, but here we have to compute the beta one hat by using information of the sample covariance and then the uh, sum of x i minus x bar squared. Um, so, I mean, we have to use this cross product uh, of sum of the cross product up here. So, um, beta one hat is the 20 divided by 40. So, just applying the a, uh, a formula of beta one hat, that's the uh, 0 0.5. And then the beta zero hat is the y bar minus beta one hat x times x bar, which is the 25 minus 25 times 10 equals 20. So, I mean, number A is the, the uh, is the oh, I think for everyone it's okay because it just use the information here, and then we we would like to ask you to set the ANOVA table as discussed in the class and perform hypothesis testing for H zero beta one equals zero, and then SSR is the beta one square uh, beta one head square, which then times sum of x i minus x bar square. And then this is going to be 0 0.25 times 4 equals to 10. So it's the 0 0.25 for beta 1 has square. And then this sum of x i minus x bar square is going to be 40. This is going to be 10. And then SSE is the uh, 50. So, so this, this is uh, SST is the SST minus SSR, which is the, so this is the SST, which is 50. And then 10 is the, so this is R, which is 40. And then um, the MSE is the um, SSE divided by the N minus 2. So it's the, here N is the 12. So we divide by 10, it's got to be 4. Then we can get the F value by N at the uh, MSR, which is equal to SSR divided by 4, and then which is the 4, which is NSE, then we get 2.5. Then we use the uh, F value. I mean, you can use R, you need to use R for this, this quantity. Uh, so you can use just the test statistic, uh, the test statistic with the uh, critical value for f, f distribution, or you can use the, um, uh, the um, so you can use the uh, uh, the uh, capital to capital period. You can use the f statistic. So for example, for this case, if you want to calculate the AI P value uh, here, so you can use the, the QF one here. Sorry, the PF one here. And then we have the um, 0.5 with the one and ten. So this PF is the cumulative the, the probability for the F distribution. And then if so, we need to put take one minus, so we can get the um, non-second condition by using the package p-value. So because the, we would like to calculate the power that f is the uh, mm, F distribution is greater than F value that you have. 
this is the p value. The p value is the power of the f distribution under the hypothesis greater than the f band. So we use this the um, one minus pf because the pf gives the um, cumulative probability of s distribution. So, I mean, in summary, there are two approaches. You can use the F critical value and compare with the test statistic. Um, and then the, um, you can use calculate the p-value for here. And then don't worry about the uh, this document. I will post this document this after this office hour, which is a solution. Doctor Show. Yeah. But to get the value of the F with one de one con ten degrees of freedom, the four point ninety six, uh, that's using QF, right? Not PF. Yeah, it's a QF, yes. Okay, okay. If you use the QF. So PF up. is just for the P value, you're saying? So QF means that you can give the, uh, you can get the uh, critical value. QF will give you a critical value. So if you look at. Mm -hmm, exactly. But what are you saying then about the PF? Uh, for P value calculation. So there are two approaches in here. As I said, you can calculate the critical value, mm -hmm. which is the 4.96, and compare with this F value. Exactly. And then you can calculate the P value. So, so if the P value is less than 0.05, then you reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater than 0.05, you do not reject, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. So this p value, as you know, um, in the in the um, elementary statistics, the which is the uh, probability that the the ob we would like to uh, we observe uh, we have uh, we would like to get the uh, value uh, uh, as as extreme or more extreme than the, what we have observed. So what we have observed is the uh, 2.5. So we would like to calculate the, the probability that the, uh, the F distribution with the uh, degrees of freedom, the um, 1 and 10 is greater than 2.5. So that's why we use the PF, which gives the cumulative probability. Uh -huh. And then this is the sign is, you know, um, this reverse. I mean, sorry, the inequality should be the reverse. So we, I said one minus P, which is the, I calculate, so. This one. And then PF gives the mm 
Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, then number C, I asked the computer standard error that I want to have. So the, uh, as we do the homework, you can know that the, um, um, for this problem, Okay, um, yeah, okay. can you um, ask, uh, can, can you answer that after, uh, after I uh, go over onto the number D? So, because I'm uh, talking about the number C on here, so. This square, We have this case because the this is the t statistic and the t statistic square is the f f and uh, the the f statistic. So here you have the zero point five square zero point two five divided by standard error of the data one s square. is equal to 2.5. So which gives the one over and that error of the beta one at entire square is equal to 2.5 divided by 0 0.25, which is equal to 10.
Is this clear? So then we get a standard error of the beta one f is the square root of one over ten. So if you do calculation by the um, roots of one over ten, I try your calculator or um, uh, in your uh, by using R, you can get the zero point zero three one six. Is this okay? So basically, for uh, what I ask is to calculate the, uh, the the standard error of the uh, beta one hat by using the f distribution. I mean, or f statistic. Okay, and the number are, I mean, the D. Uh, so they, we write to find 95% complete interval for sigma square. Um, here, I gave the hint to use the distribution information of MSD. Um, here, we use the distribution information that MSD, so which is the as you know, n minus two times the s squared divided by sigma square has the chi square distribution. So if you build a two sided the comp ninety five percent complete interval, so we have the zero point um, critical value for the um, uh, zero point nine seven five and the critical value for zero point zero two five. Uh, that's that it consists of lower bound and upper bound for this interval. Uh, for this the statistic to be the, the probability to be uh, 0.95. So which means that if you look at uh, high school distribution is like this. So we have high school distribution like 10. And then so we have this, which is the um, cumulative probability um, 0 0.025. And then the uh, also the tail probability is the Zero point zero two five, and then this uh, would be in our notations with high score would be ten with the zero point nine seven five. So here in our notation, the probability on here um, is the um, the probability of the the, the right hand side of the 
this after this the discrete curve value. And then here it would be I square 10 with the 0 0.025. So this would be the middle part will be the 95%, which is 3.95. So far so good. And then by rearranging this term, we can get the n minus 2 times s squared divided by the chi squared critical value for um, 0 0.025, and then the n minus 2 s squared divided by the uh, chi squared value for 9, 0 0.975. And then if you use r for this one, So so we have the so n minus times s square is the uh, SSE uh, so here are the so we can calculate we can already calculate SSE which is a forty. And then we divide by the Q chi square, uh, which is gives a critical value for um, cumulative property 0.975, which is equal to uh, the, the chi square value for um, in our notation with the 10, with the degrees of freedom 10 with the 0.025. So, I would say Q here n is equal to Also, um, And then we just apply the formula with the um, these critical values um, so that we can get the interval. And then for the um, it was questions for the calculating the f value, so we put use the the pf, but the
for number for for b. So we say, um, and which gives the probability that the f distribution uh, or ref random variable, I would say. With the yeah, it was a freedom one and ten. Greater than the two point five, which is the F F statistic, F statistic that we get. This so so to calculate people we use this uh one minus P F two point five. In this case, because 2.5 is our f value, 110 is the our uh, the degrees of freedom in this uh, f distribution. So, is this clear? Any questions in number two? Okay, so then let's look at the number three. So for number three, uh, so now uh, we have a model that uh, yi is called the beta xi plus epsilon i. Version i is the iid with normal distribution with sigma square. And this model is called regression model through origin. So this model is the, uh, uh, you do not have intercept. So you only have a slope point here, uh, which is the form of the y, expectation yi is equal to beta xi. Uh, Expectation y i give x i is equal to uh, beta x i, which is the, uh, uh, the linear uh, with the which uh, uh, passes the, the origin, uh, which is like this. So, and then here that I ask um, in the A, so find the least square estimator for beta. 
and then uh, we can use the um, same technique as we did in um, model with the intercept. Um, so we minimize the this um, sum of the error square, uh, which is sum of the yi minus theta xi square. And then if you differentiate by with respect to beta, and then you can get the, uh, the sum of 2xi, uh, uh, I mean 2xi times yi minus beta xi, and the sum of them. And then uh, you can get the solution for a beta hat, uh, which is sum of the xi yi divided by sum of the xi x squared. So this is the, our the least square estimator. Uh, so this number a is just a uh, simple as a differentiation problem. And you can show the least squares estimator uh, that found A is unbiased. So, um, so we have take an expectation on here. Then this uh, expectation of yi is equal to uh, beta times xi. So then you can get the pull out beta outside of summation. Then you can say sum of the i equals 1 to n xi squared divided by sum of the xi squared, which is equal to beta. Uh, so you can get the, uh, you can prove the unbiasedness by, uh, by simple uh, the calculation in this case. And then uh, for to propose the estimator for sigma squared. So for uh, estimator uh, for the sigma square, we use the um, the residual uh, sum of the residual square divided by n degrees of freedom. Um, so here uh, we can expect that the for numerator is going to be residual, which is the i y i minus y i hat square. Y i hat is the the fittest value. Here we don't have the uh, intercept here, so the just field value is just the slope, the estimated slope times xi. So that's the our fitted uh, value, and then that square with the sum that's the our residual sum of the squares, or uh, you can think of this as the SSE sum of squares for errors for this duration model through the origin, and then. Oops, And here we uh, divide by the n minus one because we only uh, estimate beta hat, so we only uh, estimate the one uh, parameter. So we have a degrees of freedom with the we have freedom of the uh, estimate the other quantity with the uh, n minus one. So total with the total number of observation minus the, the number of estimated parameter, which is n minus, which is one. So we have degrees of freedom n minus one, and then we divide by this uh, sum of square for error divided by n minus one. So that's the, our, the proposed estimator for sigma square. Uh, uh, which we use the same concept as a simple linear regression and then general multiple linear regression. And number four, um, I think first the uh, two questions are the thing that's really straightforward. And then for C, so we define our statistic by one minus sum of square error divided by sum of square total, which is the sum of square regression divided by sum of square uh, total. And then this uh, shows the goodness of fit, and then it indicates the data explained by the picture. And then the you can get the uh, and then the, the proportion of the variation explained by the predictor. So in the R output, um, you can see that there is a uh, multiple R squared. And this is the 0 0.8115. This is the uh, our the R square value. And this is just the R square that we are going to talk about uh, um, in the uh, later class uh, in the uh, 
uh, in the um, uh, um, the this course, uh, which is the we are just the uh, some penalty penalty just from the um, penalty by penalty by the putting too many predictors because this I square is always increases. Uh, so if you put the uh, predictor uh, without any relationship with the uh, the response, the R square is always increased. So this multiple R square is not very good uh, goodness of fit uh, when you have many predictors. Uh, but the uh, for uh, uh, for just a small number of predictors, this R square is the very good, good uh, indicator of a goodness of fit. And then here we have only one predictor, so this R uh, square is the is a good indicator of show, showing uh, goodness of fit. So, and then this is 0 0.8185, which means that the 81.15% uh, uh, of the variability uh, is the explained by um, uh, um, by this eruption. So, I mean, so 81. Point, uh, that point one five percent of the variability of the weighting is explained by this eruption. So that's the uh, meaning of the R square. Any questions? Okay, if you do not have any questions, then uh, I will finish this the uh, this uh, office hour session, and then good luck for the exam. Dr. Shu. Hi, uh, yes. Um, I have a question about uh, the homework, but one of them. OK. So uh, would it be possible to for me to share something? OK. It will be easier this way. Do you want to share screen or not? Oh, uh, uh, whiteboard's fine. Okay, I can show it on the whiteboard. So it's about the question, the first question, the, it's like the uh, showing uh, how the covariance matrix ends up in expected value of x, x transpose minus the mean, right? 
Um, so I'm having trouble in this part. So I ended up having basically after well the whole thing, uh, I get like this, right? I get this minus minus six. And so I end up having this where well where I can just um cancel out these last two terms but then this one is not gonna be the same one as the one of the actual formula which is mu x mu x transpose. This this is uh this is suppose what I well this is suppose what I should get but I'm not getting like and, and well I cannot flip them around because it's a totally different matrix because for the first for the one circle in red it's just like a p times one times a one times p so it's a p times p matrix and the orange one is just a one by one. I think your correct token is for the second one is these not correct, I think. Yeah. I'm sorry? Your calculation for the second one is not correct, I think. Exactly, that's what I thought, but I, like, I, I checked and uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong because, uh, uh, well, whenever you do, like, because, uh, you know, we, we, we're having, like, uh, Expect like the, this and then expected value of x, right? So that's just. Um, no, you cannot pull out that transpose in here. You cannot what? You cannot, you, I mean, you are here interchanging your product the calculation order. I mean, it's, it's not, it's a metric you cannot do just like that. Oh, perfect. You're interchanging the next time, your x transpose should be switched, so it should be. Oh, great. Okay, so it should be like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't know you were writing. Sorry. Um, that's okay. So it should be, Yeah. I mean, you have okay. the constant, that's correct, but you cannot uh, change the order. Nice. All righty then. That was my error. Okay. So whenever, exactly, I was pulling out the constant, but just putting it in front of it, but no. Yeah, exactly. We cannot do that because then it would change the matrix, right? Yeah, you, you cannot change the matrix for I mean, for a constant, it is okay that mm -hmm. you can. I mean, this yes, we can pull out the we can pull the, the constant, but mm -hmm. the, const, pull out the constant, but here for matrix multiplication, you have to keep the order exactly. That's right. Okay, that, that was my mistake right there. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was just like going around it to see what, what's wrong with it, but yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. Okay.